It's making season, guys. It's making season. Hello and welcome to the Crochet Luna Blogcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from the San Diego area in Southern California. So it's making season, like I said, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, I hope that you can grab a project and something nice to drink and that you'll join me for a nice comfy chat. So lots to talk about. Let's get started. All right, so we are now recording at the very tail end of November, and December is like knocking on the door, right? So that means Christmas and all that comes with it, and I have done very little crocheting. For those of you who are new here, I am a crochet-centric blogcast. I talk about my crochet journey and everything I've been up to. Um, not too many finished objects. I've got one finished object, have not had a lot of crochet time, but I've got lots of crochet to talk about because uh, as you guys all know, with Advent season, Advent calendar season upon us, everybody is rushing to get those Advent projects uh, together. And I've got some ideas about that that I want to share with you. So thank you to any returning uh, viewers and to anybody who's new to this uh, channel, welcome. I hope that you can uh, join me for a little chat and yeah, so lots to catch up about since I last blogcasted, unless since I last uploaded a video, which is fine. I have given up trying to pressure myself into um, getting into any kind of regular schedule. I've tried. Lord knows I've tried. But with life and with everything that goes on here in my little neck of the woods, in my home, it just becomes really difficult and I found myself really stressed out about the fact that I couldn't upload on a regular basis and so I've I've kind of let that go and uh, I record when I have the chance to record and I post on Instagram when I have a chance to post and um, yeah I think that that makes for less pressure and a more enjoyable um, you know, making experience for me. So to anyone who's out there feeling pressured about, you know, I've got to record every week or every couple of weeks or whatever it is, I would say let it go. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, we enjoy the videos. I enjoy the videos of all the people that I'm subscribed to when they pop up. I'm not really there looking at my calendar going, oh, so-and-so has that recorded a video um, in a month, you know, so I don't, yeah, no, I know what it's all about, and especially during this time of the year, it gets crazy, crazy, so, yeah, all right, last time I talked to you guys, I was getting ready to go to Rhinebeck West, which was so amazing, so awesome. I had a really, really good time. And part of it was because my mother actually went with me one day on Saturday. She was with me. And uh, she'd never been to anything like that. So it was really nice to have her there, except <laughs> she, she ended up going to the car and taking like a really long nap because she was just like, I guess, bored. <laughs> We'd been up pretty early that, that morning. But it was it was great to see her, and it was great to see everyone who came out. There was people that came out just to see me and and say hi and take pictures. And I just want to thank you all for taking the time to do that. It is absolutely a highlight for me to meet people who have followed me on this crochet journey here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. And um, if I can find the pictures of Ryan Beck West, I'll put a little, uh, a little video here and that way you guys can see some of the pictures that I took. I didn't actually.
I didn't actually take a lot of pictures because it's it's so busy, you know, you're interacting with so many people, but it also coincided with my friend Zelda's birthday, Hazy, and that was a lot of fun to see her. Um, but it was, I think it's become a highlight that, you know, Annette of the Knitting Tree takes the time to put this event together. The, the day of the first day, it rained really hard, and I thought, uh oh, nobody's going to want to come out, but... They, everybody came out Saturday. It was great. Sunday was great. I just, I feel like it's become one of those, um, things that kick off the, the crafting season. It coincides with Rhinebeck with the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. It's on the same weekend. So if you don't get to go to Rhinebeck, you can come out to the Indian Tree and see a lot of wonderful makers and meet M new makers actually like new yarn dyers she had some new yarn dyers there um at the store and then um there's events like she does like the fastest fastest knitting contest the fastest crochet contest if you want to see some of that i will put the instagram for ryan beck west below and then you can go see some of the things that happened that weekend um so yeah i i had a lot a lot of fun it'd been the first time i'd vended in years in a very long time so I was a little was a little nervous to see what it was gonna be like but I had a really nice time and it was really great to uh have my mom there with me if anybody is curious about what I'm wearing look I'm actually wearing crochet on the podcast um I'm actually wearing my jean pullover this is a pattern that I've talked about in um some videos uh before this one, I think two videos before this one. And um, I talk uh, extensively about my journey with this pullover, which I love. It, it fits great. It looks great. And this pattern is by uh, Liliana Busse. I don't know. I, every time I've butchered that name. Every single time. And it's called the Jean Pullover. It is available on Ravelry. It is... Um, a really quick make. I uh, really enjoyed this yarn. As you can see, it has a wide boat neck, which now I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple rounds of single crochet to, to tighten it up and maybe bring it in a little bit closer. I'm just wearing it with a little tank top underneath. It's absolutely perfect for the weather right now. It's starting to get cold in my house. Is one of those houses that does not have central hair or heating. So some rooms are warmer than others and I'm in the back of the house in my little crochet corner. And yeah, it, it's starting to get really cold here. <laughs> so this is a perfect, perfect, perfect make to wear. And I'm really, really happy to be able to finally wear it. And talking about my crochet corner here, you can see that I have it all decorated for the holiday. And I took this weekend to do that. And I was really excited because it's been starting to look a little drab for me. And I thought, well, it's the holidays. I need to decorate. And I um, did a little upgrading of my cubbies. I went and bought these at Ikea, these little these little bamboo cubbies and I put those together which was not fun like I don't know I just you know fiddling with like little nuts and screws with these arthritic hands it's not fun but I got it done and it gave me a chance to go through my stash and I'm really glad that I did that because I have been wanting to uh, buy some sock yarn and I thought, because I don't have any sock yarn. Well, I do have sock yarn. And I have a lot of it. I have this whole cubby up here. And I'll show it to you in the video. Because I'll post a little video that I did of the before and the after. I have a whole cubby full of sock yarn that I've been collecting. And just because I have it mixed in with the fingering weight yarn. It just, I guess I'd lost track of it, but now I've separated my fingering weight from my sock yarn and I have plenty of sock yarn, but I still bought some sock yarn because I just, I saw this sock set and I just had to have it. So I'll show you that in, um, in, uh, in later on in the video. 
So I've decided to do a little holiday redecorating here of my little crochet corner. This is the spot where I do everything. I podcast and I uh, work on everything. Basically, it's my little corner of the house where my yarn lives and all my other creative things. But I think it's time to decorate for the holidays. So I started with putting up my Chelsea Yarns Advent Calendar. I'm so excited about it. And I had this wreath here. So this was the first part of it. So it's all up. New uh, containers, uh, cubbies to put in my shelving unit. And I've got some lights. You see right there, I got some lights. A um, couple of snowmen. I got one right there. And here's another snowman that I'll be using. And, oh, I found this at Home Goods. I'll use to decorate. Yeah, so we'll see. I'll show you an after once I am done cleaning up this mess. So I finished decorating and rearranging my little corner here. And one of the things that I decided to do was sort out some of my yarn stash. And one of the things that I wanted to do is see how much sock yarn I had available in case I wanted to crochet and knit some socks uh, during the holiday season. And I found that I have tons and tons of yarn. So it's here in this cubby right here. And then I decided to pull some colorways that I thought said Christmas and holiday to me. And I put them in this cubby right here. So you can see there's some greens and some um, reds and some, you know, cream colors. So this is my uh, holiday cubby for right now. And it does have some sock yarn in there. But this one right here is all sock yarn. So I'm really happy about that. Because I actually had a lot more than what I thought. And I've hung my Chelsea Yarns Advent Calendar. No spoilers here. I've just hung it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, i really happy with the way that turned out. This is all my knit collage yarn that I've never really used. <laughs> and uh, some minis up there. But yes, overall, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. But yes, so I've got my jean pullover that I'm wearing. And I've got one finished object that I want to share with you. And this is made with yarn that I actually uh, purchased at Rhinebeck West. This is one of um, the ladies that went through Annette's uh, yarn dyeing class. Annette does these amazing yarn dyeing workshops and classes uh, for people and um, at her shop at uh, the Knitting Tree in LA. And so I saw this yarn sitting at her table and I'm like, I have to have it. So it, the name of the, of the company is, um, I wrote it down because there was no tag on the yarn. Chroma and Psyche is the name of the, of the company. But I saw this yarn and it's got all of these beautiful colors. I mean, it is just filled with color. And so I thought, yeah, I, I need to have that. So I bought this yarn there at the knitting tree and I knew that I wanted to make a hat. Um, and like I said, I just not had a lot of crochet time and I wanted a nice quick pattern. So I found a pattern and it is called the West 
post slouchy hat. Uh, the, the person who made it is Art of Zen Handmade. It's actually just a two, a two page pattern. Let me tell you, I, I made this in one sitting. I'm looking up here so I can tell you how much I paid for it because it was a very, very economical pattern. And I'll be making more. There's two versions that she has on here. Let me see. I guess I should have prepared before recording, but. Okay. It's uh, from a Canadian maker. I paid $4.30 for this pattern. This is the pattern right here. You see how it's slouchy and it's got this cute button. There's also instructions of how to do it without that little button band. Um, I wanted the button band, so I went ahead and did it. Uh, here you see the name, West Coast Slouchy Hat. Uh, yeah, and so I, I made one with that beautiful Chroma and Psyche uh, colorway. And look at how these colors just pop. Uh, it is top down. And it's got um, a little bit of an open mesh, like an open weave. And then I went ahead and did the, the button band right here. And I put my little button there. I don't know if you can see the button band because I kind of sewed it in. There it is. There it is. So I uh, I made this in one sitting. It was a really, really quick make. So I've got this really colorful hat, and I still have a lot of yarn left. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yarn, but um, I love it. I really love how all the colors um, kind of stand out, and they don't pull. Like What I like about this yarn is that the colors don't pull. You've got a nice mix of all these different beautiful colors vibrant i don't know it kind of because i'm in this holiday mood it kind of kind of reminds you of like an ornament i don't know so i feel like this is to me this is christmasy i know some of you might be thinking i'm crazy but it feels christmasy to me because it's so vibrant and happy so this is my finished object and i uh i'm trying to wrap up any whips that I have so that when I start the new year, um, I don't have some of these really old whips. I was working on a pair of Halloween socks, which I'm still working on. I'm not going to show you, show them to you because I really have had very minimal progress in them, but I'm still working on those. And then I decided that I was going to go back and just power through and finish up my eclectic jumper. And I've showed this jumper a long, long time ago. Uh, it is by Cassie Ward, and it was Inside Crochet Magazine. And I'll put the issue down. I'll put a link because now you can buy the pattern by itself. Um, this is the Eclectic Jumper. Like I said, I've, I've shown this pattern before. It is made up of all these different... Every row is a different stitch. And it's got all these beautiful colors. And you see it, it is, uh, Cassie Ward is the, it is the, the, gosh, what's the word I'm trying to think? Is the designer. <laughs> oh my God, it's so bad. Um, yes, so, it's all being housed in my Fat Squirrel Fibers bag, which is my holiday bag. This is a holiday sweater bag. It's so cute. I am a huge fan of any Beth's bags. I buy her bags all the time. And it's got all this cute little Christmassy uh, feel, vintage feel uh, pattern and zen whatever. And I uh, am housing the whole project in here. I have one panel done, which I've already shown a thousand years ago, but I'm showing it to you again. Cause you don't remember in case you don't remember it. Cause I pulled this out going, Oh, I, there you go. I remember that. 
<laughs> but it's got all these really pretty colors. And as you can see, every row is like a different stitch. Every row you do something different, which is really fun. So I've got one panel done. It's going to be cropped, which is fine. I don't mind. And then I have all of my have all of my yarn here. So I went ahead and um, started working on the ribbing. So I've got the ribbing going for that second panel, which is, and you can see it here. So this up to here is where I had done the ribbing and then I started doing more ribbing. As you can see, it's gotten bigger because the tension has changed, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to keep going. I hope to finish this quickly. I've been putting a uh, time into it this, this week. So we shall see again. It is living in my Fat Squirrel Fibers holiday bag, which look how cute that is. It's so cute. Anyway, I'm going to have so many whips. I'm going to have so many projects because... I want to talk to you about um, Advent. Now, I am lucky enough, and I recognize that I am very fortunate that I was able to afford an Advent calendar this year. I only have one Yarny Advent calendar. Um, I know people sometimes have multiple Yarny Advent calendars, but... I decided I was just going to get the one so that I could focus on enjoying making with the one um, calendar. And I decided to purchase a Chelsea Yarns uh, Advent calendar, which is beautiful yarn. I got her calendar last year. It is literally sitting there. I've done nothing with it. But... I really did enjoy opening up <laughs> all the little bags and eating all the little treats. So that's why I decided I was going to give it a second, a chance and see if this year I can actually, sorry, there was like fuzz flying in front of me, um, that I was going to go ahead and purchase another Chelsea Yarns calendar and this time really, really focus on trying to make something happen with it. Except that I don't, I didn't want to end up with a giant shawl or a giant wrap. I just, I have a couple really long shawls and I love them. Don't get me wrong, but I know me. I know that I will probably get bored of working on a giant shawl. And so I thought, what else can you do with an advent calendar? So I um, figured out that I have over 2,000 yards worth of yarn in my advent calendar, which is hanging right here. You see, this is my advent calendar right here. And 2,000 yards is a lot. I mean, if you're making a one garment my size, yeah, 2,000 yards is, is, is what you probably need. But I decided, no, I'm not going to make a garment. I, I want to make different things with my advent calendar. So what I've done is I sat down, went through Ravelry, went through different things, um, books, magazine, things like that that I have. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to make individual objects, individual things with my advent calendar. So I um, figured out the yardage and all that, as I said. And I have picked patterns. Some were already in my library. And some I purchased for this advent calendar. I think I purchased a total of like $20 worth the patterns, which is not a lot because I have so many patterns in my library. But I will show you the way I did it was I picked the pattern. This is like, so the first thing I'm going to work on is going to be this cow. Okay, this cow is called... Uh, the gradu gradually, gradually cow by a cro a a crochet. This is the maker. There, 
there's the maker, there's the name, and then you can see that I put the yardage here. So I kept track of how many yards it will take for me to make this particular cowl. And I like it because if I have different color minis, I think it's going to look perfect here with these different sections that you have. So it's not actually going to be a gradient like here, dark to light. It's just going to be whatever comes out. So here's like, here's day one. So what day one through whatever is going to be what you're going to see. So I'm going to finish this cow. And then I found, and because this is sock yarn, I found a really cute pattern for socks. And this is called the Sappin Socks. And, um, it is by Sylvie Dammy. Look at these socks. Hopefully my camera can focus on the fact that there's like a little, like a little crisp, well, I'm calling this a Christmas tree, like a little Christmas tree, um, bobble motif there. And then it's got these cute little bobbles right here that kind of remind me of like Christmas balls. And so I thought that these would make a really, really cute pair of socks. And they're not long. They're not quite shorties, but they're not super long socks. There's no ribbing, as you can see at the top. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, this one takes 400 yards is what the pattern is saying. But this might just be rounding up. It might say 400 yards, but it might take less. I don't know. We'll see. But I've kept track of the yardage there. So I've got these socks that will be made, hopefully. Then, because, like I said, this advent calendar is all sock yarn. And I love me a pair of crochet socks. I've been wearing my crochet socks uh since gosh mid October um I've been wearing what I have. I only have like four pairs of crochet socks. I should have more. Um and I want to rectify that. So I found this other pattern. It's called Crochet Crew Socks by Cat Scratch Crafts or Alicia LaFontaine. And they look like this. So again, uh, the pattern is telling me that I need 400 yards. And so I've accounted for 400 yards. Uh, the way that these, the texture and the look of these socks looks really interesting to me. So we shall see it's got a rounded toe, which is actually my preferred kind of toe. So we're going to see how these work up. And then next I've got, let's see. Oh, I've got some fingerless gloves by one of my favorite designers. I love, love, love Jean Ann's work. She is Cerulean Orchid. I've got the Stone Path fingerless gloves. These, these are the gloves right here. Um, let me take a quick, a quick peek at my Ravelry library so I can tell you because I did not write, um, the yardage or the cost. Anyway, all of these patterns are going to be, are going to be listed below. Um, I should have written it down. I don't know why I didn't do that on here. Anyway, I will link all of the patterns down below, but I've already accounted for this yardage on here. I can tell you that the yardage of these is, uh, of these is, um, 312 yards and it's again fingering or sock weight yarn. So this is 320 yards that I would need to make these. And I think these are beautiful. I love the texture, this basket weave texture. So yeah, so these will be something else that I can make with my advent. And then because I know I'm going to have a lot of little bits of extra yarn left, I want to really see. So I really want to see if I can, um, 
if I can use up every last little bit of this advent. I have two projects that I think will take up little bits of yarn. And one of them is a headband. Well, two, there's two headbands. This is called the Forever Love Headband by Therese. I'm not even trying to pronounce her um, last name, but it's, um, we are all sister, sisters in stitch is what it's, it says we are all sisters in stitch. Hmm. I think this might be the company. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that this little headband looks very simple to make. You'd need a little hair tie. It looks really simple to make. And I think it'll be perfect for those like little bits of leftover yarn. This is actually a free pattern with a tutorial. So yes, her, so her company name is sistersinstitch.com. That's the, the website. You can see it right there. Again, I will link all of these below in case you're, you're interested. But this for these little bits of yarn, there is there are going to be left. I want to see if I can if I can use them. But now this other one that I have here is really really pretty. I'm excited about this pattern. It's called the So Twisted Ear Warmer by Heather J Anderson, and it looks like that. And this pattern uses 160 yards is what it uses. It is a paid pattern, but see it's got 160 yards. Uh, I think that this would be another one of those that if I have leftover yarns, I, um, could just throw them into something like this and then see where, see where it goes. Uh, and then lastly, because I got the full advent calendar with the full size skein of sock yarn, which is like 400 yards. I wanted something that I could just shoot that whole skein up in and make something with it. And so what I found was a beanie called the Stella Beanie by Heather J. Anderson, which is the same maker of the headband. And it's this beanie right here. As you can see, it says 400 yards right there. Again, I don't know, you know, a lot of times designers will put in 400 yards, but that's being generous and maybe you might not use a whole skein. That's one of the reasons I wanted to pick a couple projects, a couple of designs that I could throw yarn into with like left, leftover, you know, odds and ends. So this is the Stella Beanie. And this will be the last project. This will be the one that I use my, um, my full skein that came with the advent calendar. So yeah. So my approach to advent is going to be very different. I know a lot of people, they'll have one, even this advent calendar has a pattern that comes with it. But like I said, I think that this is a different approach and I want to try it out. Um, let me tell you something, you guys. There's no way I can make all this in a month, okay? I've made this in like six weeks. <laughs> like, who am I kidding, right? But, but there's a plan. There's a method to my madness. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But even if I don't get it done in a month, which really honestly, come on, it's not going to happen in a month. I think that at least it gives me a roadmap to use my advent calendar. Okay. At least. Right. And I do have two weeks off, um, starting on the 22nd or something like that to, uh, just chill and crochet and enjoy the holiday season. But yeah, I mean, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven patterns. Seven patterns for 2,000 yards is really good. And so if you're like me and you're like going, what am I going to do? I have an advent calendar. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and I will link, I'm going to link to Tony Lipsy's video where she gives you 
ideas as, uh, on what to do with admin calendar. She put out a, an excellent video, um, that gives you ideas to use your advent calendar. So I'm going to link that video below because I think, uh, why reinvent the wheel? Every project that she picked is a project that I would make. And so if you do just want to have like one dedicated project for your advent calendar, then definitely check that video out. Um, I know Sandra of Cherry Heart has come up with a gorgeous wrap. I will link to that pattern and to her video that where she talks about it below. Um, please check her out. She is an amazing designer and she has an advent uh, wrap uh, pattern available right now. But this is a different approach. And I, like I said, I want to try it out and we'll see where it goes. Next, I want to share with you some of, of my um, goodies that I've purchased uh, lately. I have not, like I said, I have not been buying a lot of yarn. Um, I went to the Fiber uh, Vista Fire Festival and I shared that yarn with you guys. But I also did purchase some yarn at Rhinebeck West. Again, the, this yarn that I'm about to show you just called my name. Um, the company is called Olive Fiber Arts, and I believe this is, yeah, this is sock yarn. So again, uh, a lot of sock yarn. Um, it's called Broken Crayons, and it's this high twist yarn. This is the company name right here. And it's just this really beautiful multicolor yarn with gorgeous 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 colors and speckles i here i'll even take the there you go look at the pinks and the oranges this would make a really pretty pair of of socks so i bought that and then i um had my eye on this little kit like the whole time this maker makes knitted uh toys like you know we have our amigurumis and this is actually a knitted one and i just fell in love with this kit the company name is rabbits and robots and look at how cute that little sloth is and she includes everything everything that you need to make this little sloth okay everything this these little hands are magnetized and so there's little magnets in there um all the little felt to cut and the cutout for the for the face she said this is very beginner friendly she tells you here look beginner right there so then all i had to purchase additionally were some dpns which pray for me Pray for me. So I've got DPNs. And so I think this was, she said it would be a really quick one. And then what was really lovely about the pattern or what she does is that if you wanted to make more slots, right? More snuggly slots, she gives you a little template where you can, that you can use to cut out more little faces and paws and things like that. So she hooks you up. She was lovely, lovely, lovely. I was really happy to, to support her. I will also link her Instagram and her, her website. So I, I purchased that. And then, as I mentioned, my mother was with me. And right where we were sitting, right behind us, was this uh, knitted headband. And she's like, uh, I want this. I want you to make me this for Christmas. And I said, it's knitted. One or two, it's interlock knitting, which I've never done. So <laughs> she's like, oh, you can figure it out. So then I talked to the ladies there at the knitting tree and I'm looking around because I have, I have the pattern. I have the pattern in my hand, my hot little hand, and now it's gone. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. I found the pattern. So she saw this headband. She wants it for Christmas. Okay. And it's called the Quant. 
and it is by Star Athena. This is actually a free pattern. It looks like that. And because Annette was stalking the, the you know, obviously she had a sample there. She's stalking the yarn. I went ahead and bought exactly, exactly this color because that's the color my mom liked. She liked it. And she's like, don't you have enough yarn at home that you can make? I said, no, nope. you said you like those colors. So I went ahead and purchased the yarn, which is really pretty. This is all a Plymouth Yarn Company um, yarn. It's called Gina. It's got a little bit of fluff on it. I don't know if you can see the halo on that yarn. But it's multicolored. Very pretty. So, again, pray for me because I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try and do that for her as a Christmas gift. This is the only Christmas gift I'm going to tr attempt to make for anybody because I just you guys saw my advent calendar it's going to be quite the commitment and I really I really want to see where this goes <laughs> it's going to be a journey but then I saw the sock set I don't remember why I saw it it might have been grocery girls I don't know but I was, I'm amazed that I even got it because I know that this sells out really quick every year. It is by Rose Hill Yarns and it is their holiday peppermint colorway. Are you ready? Oh my God. Look at how pretty that looks. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at this deliciousness. Look at that. I was just over the moon when I got it because I think this is just so pretty. Even if I just look at it, I, mm, but if I can manage to make a pair of socks with this kit, you guys. Yeah. Again, <laughs> so much yarn, so many patterns, but what the hell, right? And you know what? I would attempt to try and knit this, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Because uh, as I've said before, Martha Mitchell has one of my favorite sock patterns. And this might be one where I attempt to do it. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I love, 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 love this sock yarn kit. So yeah, that's, that was, that's it. That's, that's, that's it. That's all I got. Um, I also did want to show you some things that are going to be in the shop. I had these for Rhinebeck West. My shop has been closed. It will reopen Friday, December 2nd. Um, I have to do inventory, which is no fun, but I have to do that. But I, uh, wanted to share some of the, the new pins that I have for, that will be available in the shop. And, um, so here is one of them. This is the hat project. Uh, yeah. So hat project. And I stopped because I was like, I'm looking at myself recording going, uh, this is backwards, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, sweater project. That was really cute. And, uh, sock project is another one. I also have a keychain that I wanted to share really enjoyed making this design. There's also a pin that um, Crochet Joy. There's also a, a, a button in the shop that says Crochet Joy. 
So these are some new buttons. Oh, there's not a lot. I don't, I'm not stocking great, a great many quantities of anything really, to be honest with you. Um, just a little bit here and there. I'm working on some bags that I'm hoping to have available. Um, I sewed up some bags, which I took zero pictures of. I could have shown those to you. They came out really cute. Uh, for the Halloween, they were all Halloween themed bags that I had at Ryan Back West that sold right away. They were, I mean, literally within 10 minutes, I had sold all the bags. Um, and I have no pictures to show you, except if you go to my Instagram and you look at my post for Ryan Back West, you'll see them hanging on one of my little turn, um, turny turn thingies where I display buttons. One of the things that was really popular, and I will have a restock of both, both of the knitting ones and the crochet ones were these pencils that I had made. So I love me a number two pencil and I love this brand of pencil because I think it's the best brand of pencil that you can get. Um, it is the uh, Ticonderoga pencil, number two pencil. It's just a number two pencil, as you can see here, but I had them engraved. And this one, this one says, I belong to a crocheter. And I also had, uh, I belong to a knitter, which sold out, um, waiting on the reorder that's coming in this week. So you're going to, like, I have literally three of these left. Um, so I, and this one's mine. <laughs> So I have two, two that I can sell right now. Um, so I have a reorder coming in this week. So when the shop opens on December 2nd, you'll be able to purchase a, your own pencil. I belong to a crocheter and one that says I belong to a knitter. So I was trying out to see how these would go over. I'd love a pencil. And I, like I said, I'm, I have number two pencil sharpened, um, in my, pen bowl, pen bowl, pen, what do you call it? You know, pen cup. I don't know. Um, because I'm always reaching for a pencil. So great brand of pencil. Everybody will know it belongs to you because it's going to say I belong to a crocheter or I belong to an editor. And that's really it. I, like I said, I'm working on some bags. I hope to have some bags in the shop Friday. Um, I'm really not down with this whole craziness of Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. That's too stressful for a little shop and a one person shop like me. I just can't. This week was about spending time with family and about um, just trying to like decompress from work. Uh, the last two weeks at work are really, they were really busy and from what I understand from people who have worked in schools for a very long time, um, things get really hectic right before breaks, which I can attest to now. Yeah, it was two very, very, very busy weeks. And now, you know, we had 10 days off. I go back to work on Monday and I'm, I'm looking forward to going back to work. And um, it was a much needed break. Then we go about three weeks straight and then we have another like two week break, which will be nice. But yeah, I just, there's this frenziness about the holiday season and the shopping and I'm sort of pushing back against it because I feel like as someone who's trying to declutter and like live a more simple life, I'm just not looking to get things coming into my home. I'm not looking to do crazy amounts of shopping. Do I do a little shopping? Yes. Um, I went to Ulta and I bought, um, some makeup and, um, I bought, what did I buy online? I haven't bought any bags. What did I buy? Oh, I did buy some cookbooks. I bought some vegan holiday cookbooks because I want to be able to try some new recipes when I'm on break. I bought uh, two cups, some um, Emma Bridge water cups that I'm really excited about. That's my Christmas present to me. And I did buy this book. I want to share with you real quick. It's about, now I'm not, don't, don't get crazy. Okay. 
Claudia's not going to get crazy and start quilting, but I did buy <laughs> a book on log cabin um, quilts. It's, these are like improv quil quilts. And one of the reasons I did that is because the way I've been making some of my bags, I've been kind of piecing them together. And I will, um, let me get one and I'll show you one that's in progress. Okay, so I have been working on making some project bags and I, I made some for the, um, for the craft show, the Ryan Beck West, um, show that I did at the Knitting Tree for Halloween. And I mean, I chose to make some Halloween theme bags is what I'm trying to say. Just the words coming out of my mouth. Sometimes they make sense. Sometimes they don't, but there you go. So I, um, I found myself really liking putting different, uh, pieces of the leftover fabric together. And here's one that did not make it to the, to the, to the show, but I will put it in the shop because it's almost made. I just need to box the bottoms and finish the lining. So here's, here's one of the bags. So I've been, I've just been putting different fabrics together. The, these are from a fabric that was very popular some time ago. Um, and I went, to the Vesta Fiber Festival and one of the bag makers was sewing packs of like rem like fabric remnants. And she had a pack of just, she'd cut out the different seams already. And I thought, well, that's perfect. I'll just use those. Um, so I, here's the back of it. I just decided that I, I really like putting together these kind of things. And so for the Christmas bags that I'm working on, um, I did the same thing. I've just been putting fabric together. There's a panel, one of the panels for one of the bags. And they're not really symmetrical. They're all in, they're all individual. They're all going to be basically one of a kind because I'm just kind of like putting things together that I have. Here's another panel. So, and then I have other fabric that I, that I have that I want to make bags from. So that's, that's what I've been working on. So I found this book that, cause I'm just winging it. Like I, I'm just putting things together. I found this, this book because I really kind of like the look of these log cabin designs. And I think that they're really, um, I, I like the asymmetry of it, but yet the uniformity of how these things are put together. And when I was looking at the different pictures in here, I thought, wow, that, that would be a cool way to, to design a bag, you know, to, to be able to make bags that have, they're kind of like asymmetrical, but yet they have this sort of like unifying look to them. Uh, so I bought it and I've been reading it and I've learned a lot from it. So I want to start making bags that are a little bit more like different and unique like that. Um, and one of the amazing things that came out of Ryan Beck West is that my mom, my mom was <laughs> fairly impressed with my sewing because <laughs> she was like, I can't even sew straight. Um, and, but she's been hearing me about my struggles with my sewing machine and I have a I picked up a sewing machine from a thrift store and that's what I've been sewing on. And so for Christmas, she actually gifted me a sewing machine and she gifted me a really, really good sewing machine, which is a Yuki brand sewing machine. It's like a little video over here below because I'm really proud of that sewing machine. I'm proud that I was able to put it together, like thread it and use it and work on it like all within one day, which I've always been really intimidated by sewing machines. But there are so many resources for Yuki because it's such a, a, a huge, amazing brand. Um, and this particular machine is also a quilting machine. So that's another reason why I picked up that book because although like I don't see myself becoming a quilter or making these giant quilts, I do like the idea of maybe putting some quilting onto bags that I make. And like... <laughs>
said, I don't see myself making huge bag updates, but I do want to keep, you know, progressing and learning how to be a better sewist. And, um, I just, I love me a project bag. So, you know, Allie from Little Drops of Wonderful and I run the Dodger Bag Mail and I, like, I never get to make a bag, right? And so now I've got this amazing machine that I'm just totally in love with and I just hope to, um, better my skills and then be able to produce some, you know, unique one of a kind bags. So that's all. That's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Um, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon. I don't promise blogmas, but I promise some blogmas type videos. Um, not going to commit to anything. I'm going to commit to joy and to joy, to joying. Is that even a word? I'm going to commit to enjoying the holiday season, enjoy my crafting, um, not put pressure on my making and share with you what I can share, what, what I'm able to share. And I thank you. Thank you so much for you stopping by and spending time with me. I wish you well. Um, crochet on and I will see you next time. Bye.